Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the January 2022 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made them, get a couple tips along the way, and if you're a channel member, find out how you can download this month's bonus printable. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, in my debut video, I shared a look at the newest sheet load of cards, January 2022, showed you the first set I made, and told you how you can download it for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. If you haven't yet downloaded it, and you want to, after you're done with this video, I have a link to the debut video in the description box, and you can click on that, watch it, and find out how to download the printable. Today I'm here to share with you the process of my first set and my team of collaborators will be sharing their first sets here on YouTube and over on Instagram. Up on screen now is a look at the January through June 2022 team and you might notice that there are some new faces. I will be back later on in the month to introduce them officially, but until then, the new members are marked with an asterisk in the description box below in the link list. Now, one thing I do want to point out, starting in January 2022, we are doing something a little bit different here on YouTube so you can find all of the collaboration team members' videos. Instead of having you follow the link list in case one is broken or somebody isn't ready yet, we will be using a hashtag that will pop all of those up here on YouTube. So in the title and in the description box is the hashtag for this month. I will also put it up on screen now, but all you'll need to do on YouTube is click on that hashtag and it will pull up a page that is only the collaboration team members videos. So you can browse through those and watch them all, leave them some love. Then when you're done, make sure to go visit the hashtag over on Instagram. I do have a link to that as well down in the description box. And if you would rather go through with their individual links on my YouTube channel, everybody is listed in the description box below. I know that they would all love you to stop by, see what they created and leave them some love. Now I did mention this yesterday, but January 22 is kind of special. This sketch was actually inspired by a card that my friend Danny made. And when I reached out to her, she said it was inspired by a Mojo Monday sketch. So I did get permission from both parties to use it as inspiration for the new sketch. They are both listed up here in the fishtail banner. If you have your sheet load open on a, a device like an iPad or a computer, you can click on the URLs and be taken to their sites. I do also have these listed in the description box below so you can go check them out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the products that I'll be using today. Since I did choose some nautical themed papers, for my focal point I will be using this sailboat set which is an old one from Inka Dinka Do. I will be stamping those in Gina K Designs Cherry Red Ink. And because I didn't really have any nautical themed stamp sets and I wanted something a little fun, I decided to make my own printable where if you cut these to the crop marks, they are the size you need for your sentiment block. Now at the end of this video, I will be telling you if you are a channel member, how you can download this for free to use. Whether you have nautical goodies you want to use for January 2022, or if you have them you want to use for something else. Now while I'm talking about my channel members, I do just want to give a big shout out and say thank you so much for your monthly support. You help me keep crafting here on YouTube and you help keep Sheetload free to subscribers. Thank you so much and I hope that you're going to enjoy this little printable as a token of my appreciation. 
I got out some red cardstock for my matting. And then for my pattern papers, I chose these three pieces from Minte's Marina collection. I love the weathered wood, the blue and white polka dots, and these little kind of origami ships. Now, as I add any more products or tools in the video, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I'm gonna start today by cutting the pattern papers. Now, if you're like me and one of your papers does have a direction that you wanna pay attention to, you'll want to make sure that you start off with that sitting in the correct direction. I want my panels to be vertical, so I'm gonna cut the white strip off the side so it will fit in my trimmer. Then I will rotate this and I'm going to cut a piece off the top that is five and a quarter inches tall and then cut that down to three pieces that are four inches wide. Now because these pieces are four inches wide, it will take up the entire 12 inches. So make sure not to do a generous four inch cut. I usually cut to the left of the cut line. For the next pieces, I am once again going to cut a strip that is five and a quarter inches tall because that will fit my piece B's and my piece C's and leave me a nice strip at the bottom to use later for decoration. So I cut that five and a quarter inches tall and then I rotate and I cut three pieces that are two and a half inches wide. I realize that I am going through the dimensions rather quickly, but don't worry, each one of these is given on the free printable, and today's video isn't really about measurements, it's more about me showing you the action of how I cut the papers. Once my weathered wood paper was cut down to size, I brought in the remaining two pattern papers, made those same exact cuts, and here's a look at all of those finished cut pieces. Next, I brought in two pieces of red cardstock that I will cut per the instructions for CS2A. Now you only need to cut until you yield nine total pieces that are two and three quarters by five and a quarter inches tall. So what I did is I took each of my pieces of red cardstock and I cut pieces that were five and a quarter inches tall and I cut three of those and then that remaining piece at the bottom I can use later on to either decorate these cards use for mats maybe if I want to or just put in my scrap bin for later use for those last two pieces I did double them up when cutting if your cutter will handle this it speeds it up just make sure you're always holding them nice and straight together so your cuts are all even I brought in a piece of that same red cardstock and cut this down per the CS2B dimensions I'm going to end up with nine pieces that are four inches wide by one and three quarters inches tall I start by cutting these into two strips that are four inches wide and then double them up and cut until I have those nine total strips. Next up for me is going to be a piece of white cardstock for my sentiment squares. Now this is a great opportunity for you to use up scraps if you don't want to get out a full sheet. For me, I'm going to be using the channel member bonus printable, and these are just some nautical sayings that I laid out so when they are cut to the crop marks, they will be the two and a quarter inch squares. Now, if you are a channel member, make sure to check out the community tab today, and I'm going to be telling you how you can download this printable for free. Please note the instructions at the bottom. Make sure you print this at 100% and then cut it down to the final two and a quarter by two and a quarter inch size. Now I did end up getting 12 sentiments on this one piece of paper and I do only end up needing nine for the sheet load. The sentiments that I have on here say friendship is the best ship of all. Oh ship, I forgot your birthday. Ahoy matey and seize the day, S-E-A-S. 
Next, I cut my five pieces of royal blue cardstock into card bases. This did leave me with one extra, and I will just use that for a future project. Now, I did do most of this cutting off camera, but I just want to show you that to get today's card bases, I cut it in half at four and a quarter inches wide before scoring and folding them. Now it's time to stamp me some sailboats. I am choosing the three medium sized sailboats and I will stamp each of those three times onto just some scraps of white cardstock with Gina K Designs Cherry Red ink. Now because these are scraps and I would have to keep moving the paper or moving the stamp on my Misty, I am just using a stamp block with my foam pad underneath. Between each of the sailboats, I clean off my stamp and then I keep going until I have nine sailboats. Now these would be pretty easy shapes to bring in your scissors and fussy cut, but because I have my brother scan and cut, I went ahead and took these off screen and had the machine do the work for me. I brought back in pieces B and C from my pattern papers along with the red cardstock mats. What I'm going to do now is add adhesive to the back of each of the pattern paper pieces and then it gets matted with the red cardstock. Now you'll notice here that the pattern paper fills the strip left to right and there's an even border on the top and bottom. For my larger strips, they are vertical, so it fills from the top to bottom and the red border is on the left and right. I continued adhering these together until all of the pattern papers had a mat. Now I'm going to show you how I put together this month's card kits or what I call the pieces I put together that will go on each card. I like to do it pretty systematically so I know what I've used and what I have left. For this, I'm going to start with the sailboats for piece A, skip to the polka dots for piece B, and then finally get that remaining red wood grain piece for piece C. For the next card, I'm going to grab the sailboats again, but this time I'm going to go over to the red wood grain and then back to the polka dots. Now for the third card, you can do either one of those as long as you stay consistent with the rest of the sets. For me, I went back to the first one where I did piece one, two, and three right in order. For the remaining ones, I need to make sure that I always do two kits using the first set of papers. That way at the end, I won't wind up with two pattern papers of the same image on one card. Now that I have all of my pattern papers sorted out, it's time to start adhering them to the card bases. The large pattern paper piece, of course, gets centered on the card front. And then for the larger strip, it's going to go vertically toward the right. Now, because the sketch is always at 100% on the printable, you can use that for placement if you would like. Otherwise, I usually just eyeball it, maybe keeping the first one out where I can see it and be able to judge where the pieces should go. Just make sure to remember that you can always move these pieces where you would like them. If you want that vertical piece to the left, put it to the left. If you want to move the horizontal piece up on the card, move it up. Sheet load is just a great starting off point for you. Now you will notice there I had a little overhang on the pattern paper, so I just brought in my nonstick scissors before I adhered that down. I continued adhering the rest of the pieces until all nine of my card fronts were ready to go. Now it's time to get some sentiments added. I chose nine of the 12 that I cut down earlier and I just saved those other three for future cards. Because the sentiment piece is larger than the pattern piece of paper it goes on top of, when I add adhesive to the back of these, I do concentrate it more toward the center. Now you could always do like Christy Marcotte does if you ever watch her videos, and she adds extra little cardstock shims when things hang over like this. You could also add this with some foam tape to make that difference even more noticeable.
Once I had all of the sentiments on the card fronts, I brought back in my die cut sailboats and got these added to the card. Now since so far my card was pretty flat, even though it has a lot of layers, I did go ahead and add foam dots to the back of the boats before I placed them onto the sentiment block. I did always try to make sure when I placed the sailboat that a little bit of the top hung off the edge just like on the sketch. I continued adding these until all of the ships were in place and then it was time to add a little embellishing. On the sketch, and just like on Danny's original card, I have a suggestion to put three embellishments over to the left of the sentiment piece. Now for me, since I had a lot of white space behind those sailboats, I decided to go with some leftover diamond dots I had. I got out my art glitter glue in my fine tip bottle and I added three small dots around the outside of each sailboat. I did let that get tacky for probably about five seconds before I picked up a diamond dot and placed it onto the glue. Now you'll see that one there I had to take away because two diamond dots stuck together, but it was an easy fix. These diamond dots, not only are they economical to add as embellishments to a card, but they also add some nice color. After those had some time to dry, I then decorated the inside of each card using the same stamp set and some scraps of pattern paper. Now while I didn't show this process on screen, here is a look at how I did that. I added two strips, kind of looking like washi tape, on the top and bottom of my white cardstock on the inside, and then the boat that I used on front, I did a stamp off of it on the inside. I just thought this added a little extra fun, and since I had to put white cardstock anyway for this message to the recipient, I thought I would jazz it up a little bit. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the January 2021 sheet load. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators, see what they've created, and leave them some love. You can click on the hashtag in the title or in the description box to see all those. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.